when the temperature starts to get especially into those double digits we do like to just remind people to be a bit more aware and monitor your pets more closely because the you know like in the summer just as they can suffer from exposure in the winter they can as well and and uh, so like some simple things we advise is um, like, again, like, let your pet stay inside when it's really cold out. And even those really cold days when you normally might take them out in the car and stuff to go shopping, uh, it's probably best to leave them at home. The, a car can really turn into almost like a refrigerator. Uh, we've all sat in a car after even a long drive with the heat on. And boy, when it's double digits cold, it cools, it cools off fast. And especially when they're in there breathing, that adds humidity to the environment as well. And, you know, like in dogs, the, the, you know, the, the scale varies, right? Like from a Chihuahua to a Husky with a double coat, like every dog's different for what it can tolerate. Um, but no matter what, every dog um, has a point that it can suffer from exposure, both in the heat and the cold as well. And so with the winter here, that's certainly just something, no matter what your dog, uh, uh, what breed it is, what kind of hair coat, their age, their state of health, all these things can factor. So really just be aware of what your dog needs and monitor and let them be inside when it's warm. Some other things we like to uh, make people be aware of too is uh, like just even going for walks, their paws, um, depending on the breed, if they got a lot of fur on their paws, like a lot of snow and ice can get captured in between the toes. That can actually cause some pain. And even if that does, and if that's not the case, depending on what your local municipality uses to break up ice, and stuff. There's salt and chemical, other chemicals that are used as well that a dog will get home and start to lick that snow and ice off their feet. And that can actually cause illness you know, when they ingest that stuff too. So either checking your dog's feet regularly to see if there's any ice buildup or just wiping them off when you get home. I, I have to do that anyhow or my dog just trapes snow and everything everywhere throughout the house. So it's, it's, it's got a dual purpose there for that. Um, but um, otherwise, I mean, for those really small breeds that just aren't really <laughs> liking the cold, we still want to give them some exercise. So they do make those booty type things. They're not just a fashion statement. They do work if you can get your dog to wear them <laughs> and walk with them, of course. So that's another option as well. And especially, um, you know, with cats, we talk about dogs a lot in the winter, but cats in particular, uh, it, some people let their, their cats go outside and get some fresh air as well. And they think um, that, you know, they might be pretty resourceful and they can find warm places. But a cat that especially isn't habituated to living outside um, is going to want to spend less time out in that cold and to monitor. And the other thing we ask when it comes to cats is just be, be wary that cats do like to get up into some warm engines. Um, just the neighborhood cats, even a neighbor's cat might just get some warmth, some warmth and jump up there. So just tapping on the hood of your car or just honking the horn uh, just to uh, get a cat out of there before turning the engine over.